All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Gina, in hey. person this time. <laughs> Here we are again. Way better. Welcome back to Michigan. Hey, thanks. Uh, been in town for a couple days now? Yeah, for like a day and a half. Amazing. And mm. home now is Costa Rica. Home is kind of nowhere. Like I've, uh, it's it's the weirdest thing. I moved out of San Diego and moved completely out of my place and was in Costa Rica for about two and a half months, and then I'm going back again for two months. But then it's kind of we'll see where I plant from there. Oh goodness, how yeah. fun! Yeah, it's we're weird. gonna. I want to dive into that. I know you walked in and I was like, nope, I don't want to hear anything but about it yet because we're about to jam. <laughs> so we'll dive in. But um, for those listening, um, Gina's a good good friend of mine. A phenomenal, phenomenal nutrition, master of human nutrition, yeah. dietitian, and so forth. So tell us a little bit about your work for those who haven't caught one of our previous episodes. Yeah, I guess maybe just to speed people up on, on my philosophy is I've been classically trained dietitian, and you maybe you've heard this story if you listen to our other podcasts, but um, I really was so interested in health my whole life, and I was constantly trying to follow meal plans for myself. I was trying to give people meal plans just like they teach you when you go to school, Mm -hmm. and people still seem like they're struggling, and it's like, there's got to be more, right? Mm -hmm. Our path to feeling confident and in our health and our most, like if we could think of our most expansive best self, it's not from just a restrictive diet and Mm. meal plan. And so I really just became so passionate about understanding why do we do what we do? Why do we make the food choices that we eat? Why do we sometimes overeat or choose certain foods? And how do we feel like health is effortless just from the inside out? And Mm. so it's fun. It's a really fun, deeper journey of exploration of like, how does our mind play a role in our thoughts and our beliefs? How does our body, our physical body, our our hormones, our stress hormones, Mm. our everything and our relationship to food, our environment. And so it's it's been a really fun journey for me to go deeper into myself and and learning about how all these things play a role. Yeah. So huge Mm. there. And, you know, I kind of preference this previous, if anybody's caught the other episodes, but like gravitated towards you as far as you know your your knowledge and so forth but I've been involved like and I have you know networking with a lot of other individuals that could look like similar credentials but the big the big key here is how you dive in consciously there's so much more to nutrition and your relationship with your body than yeah. the next why well, eat this food not this food and restriction and all those types of things food so. is like the bait to like a deeper like deeply spiritual experience right Mm -hmm. like whatever you want to call it like spiritual personal growth whatever you want to call it it is like the the bait to really peeling back deeper layers about yourself and when you start to ask those questions like why do i do what i do and you start to like different emotions come up memories come up your past comes up what you want in the future comes up and you realize like oh we are so much more than yeah a piece of paper with just food rules and it's not that like those things can't be helpful i find them valuable right like recipes and you know sometimes information and guidance is helpful but it's really fun when you start digging deeper yeah what do you think because you know To be completely honest and transparent, I keep talking about this recently because I had a radical self-change happen probably midway through last year. And as a fitness professional and someone that struggled with their weight their whole life, I got into fitness immediately for losing weight for MMA. So I was on this crazy restrictive diet for MMA. Then after that, it was um, a men's physique competition. So then I wanted to get on stage in shorts. So then I went on this crazy restrictive um, nutrition protocol for that. And then after that was CrossFit where we went on, you know, Whole30 and all these like different types of modalities that are restricted and these, these borders. And it just, um, I honestly, up until halfway of last year, didn't really click with the idea of when it actually gets easy, when you actually start tuning in, when you actually start loving yourself and all these things where it was so much hard work, dedication and discipline yeah, I get and like that. work harder <laughs> yeah. and like eat this and that. <laughs> and like, you know, it was, it was, and then it just led to a bunch of uh, shame and stress. And I know on the last podcast, you were just talking about how stress is the opposite of weight loss yeah and stress is so key so i've like this is a messaging that i feel is like so relevant and the idea behind another nutrition plan or this or that is so boring to me now Mm -hmm. that when you click in and you actually tune in like a lot of this do you see this happen with your clients where it tends to get easy yeah it gets easier and that that's the cool thing is this was a really cool experience i don't remember if i shared this on the last podcast i may have or not but it was a really great realization of how well this works that one of my clients was like, when we start working together, don't tell me not to drink coffee or drink alcohol. Did we talk about this before? That doesn't sound familiar. I don't know. (laughs) Okay. They need it again. Give it to them. Yeah, yeah. So he said, said, 
he said, all my, my only rule is don't tell me not to drink alcohol or drink coffee. Those are my two things that I love mm-hmm. in this world, right? And if I would have just been straight out of college with my degree, I would have been like, well, those things aren't good for you. You mm-hmm. can't do that and rules and restriction. And then he would have been battling this love for what he wants with this fear instilled in him that I'm trying to do, plus this rebellious teenager that probably would have come out of him that's like, I want to be sovereign and I want to be in my power. So it would have been really a disaster. And so from the start, I was like, okay, that's fine. No problem. Mm -hmm. And I just kept asking him the question, how does this make your body feel? Oh, you had this today. Mm -hmm. How How did you feel? How did you feel? And he came back and he was like, you know, it's kind of the weirdest thing, but I realized like after I'm about halfway through my cup of coffee, my body actually starts to feel worse after that. And I never realized it. And then he started like actually paying attention to his dinner and he, and he's like, this is kind of weird, but I actually don't even really like how alcohol makes my body feel. I just, it was more the idea of mm-hmm. it that I was hooked on. And so now he's actually been two years without any alcohol. He just, he just stopped drinking it and he wow. was like, wow, I actually realized that I was more attached to the idea of it. Mm. And now he has like one cup of coffee versus like coffee all day long before. And so it was just so cool. And when I asked him, like, was that hard? Did you have to willpower your way through? And he's mm-hmm. like, no. Once I just knew, he's like, I laugh at myself at how easy it is. That it's just like, oh, my body just told me. And once you feel your body, it actually becomes easy. And it's almost weird that when it becomes easy, we're like, is this too easy? Right. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Ground's about to fall out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do? Because something that's resonated with me and a lot of the individuals I get to work with um, – especially myself, where I went through experiences before where I got finally got grounded and like decompressed my nervous system. And one of these experiences where like I finally understood what it's like to be at baseline, right? I didn't realize like how much time I was spending in my flight or flight state or, you know, parasympathetic state, all yeah. of that. How do you get your clients? Because I do, obviously food, getting a good relationship with your food and tuning in is, is a component where they're going to see and feel how that affects them. But when you're in that flight or flight state and a lot of people will occupy mm-hmm. all the time. How do you get them to baseline? Because that's when I really started getting sensitive to, whoa, I actually don't really like drinking. It isn't really that great. Like, mm-hmm. and those types of things, but it took me getting to baseline on my nervous system. What, what kind of things are you doing with your clients or what, what would you offer to be like, Hey, let's get you here. Yeah. And then you'll definitely be in a lot more. I think there's, I think there's two different things. I think there's one like managing your current stress that you can like tap into your body. Like right now, like if you, like if everyone was like just to close their eyes for a second and you feel your body and then if you like slowly took a breath, now you can kind of feel that, like that calm settle, right? So Mm -hmm. immediately you can change the switch of your body. Like mm. you have access to that in a second. And that can be really helpful. Like I have people do that before they eat, before they make a food choice. It's really powerful to just slow down. Um, but sometimes that stress keeps coming back. And I think that that's where the question is, is like what is in your subconscious that you're not really willing to look at? And I think mm. most people don't realize it's that sub- that what's actually running in their subconscious mind um, that's driving their food choices and their nervous system that's constantly getting re-triggered. So the breath is really powerful, but sometimes the breath is managing the things that we don't actually want to look at this deeper mm-hmm. in the subconscious. Yeah, getting still. We just yeah. went deep, huh? Oh, we're, <laughs> we're, let's go there. for it. We're going there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I um, the stillness is a, is a theme that definitely keeps coming up, and it's like, what are we avoiding? What do we not want to face? And yeah. those types of things. So yeah. it's like interesting in your in your field. Actually, you know, for me as well, because I'm like, man, we're in health and fitness, right? So when people think on the – the if they were just to make an initial judgment based on our credentials and what we do, they're like, oh, meal plan, this, yeah. or fitness, and this. Yep. But if we – it's all connected, like full mind, body, spirit, and so forth is actually being healthy. It's like interesting that your work flows into the space of getting people still and yeah. – those types of things. So well, that's how you like, end up an- trusting your body, right? It's like mm-hmm. when you get in that stillness and that mm-hmm. quiet. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think a lot of people don't realize that they have this inner resistance that they haven't created the safety mm-hmm. to explore. So then it creates this like tension in this nervous system because it's like there's this inner tug of war between like I want something, but it feels like I'm also resisting it and I can't see it and I don't know why and I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. But when you get in that stillness and you create the safety for it to come up, 
you can actually start to see, oh, what is the resistance that I have around everything I want? And then mm. your nervous system actually calms down because you can see it. You're not like at this inner war with yourself. Yeah. It's trying to tell you something. Are mm-hmm. you listening? Oh, yeah. For <laughs> or are you sure. just trying to shut it up by escapism and distraction, right? Yeah. So what are you like? What are some tangibles? I was looking forward to chatting with you on this, too, mm-hmm. because I'm like, if you're in the space where, you know, our con- conscious friends and, you know, meditation, breath work, all those types of things. But it's like, you know, some of the individuals that come in and they're they're like, I'm ready for I'm ready for a nutrition plan. Tell me what to do. Fitness. This will make mm-hmm. me feel better. And it's like, actually, I'd rather you go do a few rounds of breath, get you still so you mm-hmm. can actually tune in as well. Yeah. You mentioned breath on the last podcast. Are there any other like cues you're doing for that individual, for example, that stopped drinking? Mm-hmm. How are you able to get him to baseline so he actually could feel and understand? Because maybe I'm wrong or maybe you've experienced this before, but like when I've been in distraction mode, Mm-hmm. I'm not feeling like mm-hmm. I'm not feeling those reactions really in my body. I'm yeah. just going. Yeah. Right. We so kind of go would... through like a progression. Okay. So usually it just they'll come in with the idea of like I want to do all these mental goals. I want to eat. I want to change this. I want to change this. And I'm like, okay, great. And we we do that. Like sometimes we talk about what's healthier choices, and we might set some goals and things like that. But along the way. It's all about creating deeper and deeper awareness. So <clears throat> first, they might just have awareness around what are some things that are not working for them. A lot of people are on autopilot. They don't even mm-hmm. know what's not working for them. Yeah, just drifting, yeah. So like the first step might be, what are you unhappy with? Is it that you come home from work and you just all of a sudden grab a bag of chips and you can't stop eating them? And then the next one, the next level might be, how do you get curious of what is happening in that experience? Most people actually go deep into self-sabotage way before they're even sabotaging. They just don't realize it. So like their nervous system might get turned on hours before that and they just didn't realize it. And so Mm -hmm. they're starting to get curious like with their environment. What is happening leading up to it? What's around me? Where do I set myself up for failure? Did I get starving hungry? And they get really curious. I always tell everyone, just be your own research project. Mm. Get curious. It's like shame. You can't you can't see what's happening. Right. But like being your own research project. And then I usually have them like at the same time um as we're working together like they're doing meditations that start to bring them more and more into their body so they might start noticing what are things that's going on outside of me and then what's things going on inside of me and they're kind of going back and forth like they're actually practicing almost as if you were like weight training like you're I don't know if that's a good example or not but I feel it keep going I like, got you yeah, so yeah. you're you're actually practicing to move something whether it's your body or your awareness you're you're moving it as though you're moving a muscle you're consciously moving your awareness from you know do I hear this outside of me do I see you do I hear that and then they practice coming inside what do I feel on the inside do I feel my stomach do I see my do I feel my mind my thoughts and they're practicing to have awareness of both and it starts like Maybe with just as simple as that, what's happening? How do I check in with this? And then when you keep practicing, you can hold the awareness of what's happening inside your body while you are also have awareness with other people. So like I can look at you, connect with you, hear what you're saying, receive what you're saying, while also kind of have an awareness in my own body. Mm. And then we're just tapped in all day long. And then you start like really hearing its communication all throughout the day. And it, I think it just comes with practice and mm. a willingness to say, this is a relationship that maybe if I've never had good communication my whole life, maybe we've been cut off and disconnected. Mm-hmm. This is just like a new thing that I'm slowly building that curious relationship with. Yeah. How, how much of a fun adventure that is to re-explore that, but yeah. it's very excruciating <laughs> at first. To it can be confusing. Yeah. And like, cause Everything is inside of here. There's the mm-hmm. good stuff, but there's also the uncomfortable stuff, right? So I think sometimes it can get really confusing when you pop that lid open. And I'd be curious what your journey was like as last year when you started doing this deeper self-exploration that when you start going inward, it can feel confusing because you're like, what are all these things and these yeah, sensations yeah. and feelings and emotions? And it can feel a little chaotic or foreign or or we might label it as bad. yeah. Yeah, I um I'm I'm having a hard I'm I'm having a difficult time here because I've been in this space with mindfulness and different practices for a very long time and yeah. observing certain things for a very long time. I feel like I feel like I knew it but I wasn't on the inside yet. I'm very aware and surrounded by these things. So like my, you know, my conscious journey, like 
started a long, long time, a long, long time ago, but like halfway through last year, just really clicked. So when I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I get back and I have this whole self-love journey. I'm super excited. Yeah. And I, everything got easy and like, yeah. you know, it, it, it changed everything and health and fitness got easy and all these things. I, I stepped out of shame and really tuned in, but now I'm like, how do I, sh I'm, I'm trying like to share this experience with other people, but it's not a linear adventure a lot of cases mm -hmm. right so it's really interesting to me for me to ask you about your work because you'll get in you know probably a one-on-one -on -one client start a new relationship with them mm -hmm. and you might be starting there where if I do any you know any of the work with you're not finished and yeah. you know the, the life coaching work that I get I'm able to do it's like we we're starting at the beginning but there's such a huge journey before mm -hmm. I feel like it keeps clicking we keep having these revelations yeah. and so forth so um the the excruciating part of holy smokes I'm 33 and I didn't even really know or love myself until halfway last year like you have to mm -hmm. really leave the ego at the door to get started right mm -hmm. and explore and oh, be open-minded yeah. and yeah. it's like a lot of individuals are super resistant to mm -hmm. that so what do you offer them you just be gentle with them and kind of yeah. step you know you know it's so interesting like I, I think that we all receive that when we're ready and at mm. the right time right yep. and that's been a process for me is to trust my clients to trust them yeah. trust them that they're receiving everything that they need as they're ready to receive it. Yeah. And I think sometimes as I got excited about my own journey, I'd want to be like, no, but look at how mm. awesome you are. Love yourself. Love yourself. <laughs> and like I was really excited and wanting to like, like come to this side with me. Yeah. And then you realize like they – they receive everything as they're ready to receive it. And I think the most loving thing I can do for them is to just continue to be a mirror and ask them the questions. And for me, like, I think deep love and compassion came from understanding why do I do what I do, mm. right? There was there was a lot of shame when I thought I didn't have enough willpower, yep. but there was love and understanding that happened when I was like, oh, I was under a lot of stress. Yes. I had so many fears. I had like so many things. And now I'm like, oh, and it's like love was created. And so if I can just help people understand, hey, maybe here's, you know, why you do what you do or ask some questions and then trusting that mm -hmm. we're all getting everything that we need as we're really ready to like receive it. Yeah. Yeah. What I hear is just coming along alongside. Right. So like mm -hmm. I go through these experiences before in leadership as well as yourself being high achievers. We're doing we want to help and we yeah. we want to go, yeah. go, go and do all these things. And the, the hardest lesson that I'm learning that's so relevant and powerful right now is just being Mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. and like it's the biggest and teacher, the ministry right? of just presence with someone to yeah. be alongside them through that mm -hmm. journey as well yeah and we're like that. i keep clicking out where i have these like revelations and experiences and i'm like okay great now i just want to share it with everybody this and that i'm like yeah. no i have to i can just be and reflect and and, and mirror that as well huh? yeah i mean it's i've tough. um i actually so in costa rica one of the experiences i it's just so funny i just thought of this is it's just like what you're saying so mm -hmm. Uh, in Costa Rica, there's these incredible shamans. And if you ever have the opportunity to sit with a shaman and ask them about life advice, it's in, it's just incredible. They are raised in the jungle and their life work is dedicated to growing their consciousness. So they tend to say amazing things. And while I was in this um, experience in Costa Rica, I had this really deep realization that I was like, I'm in an industry that shows people like because of all the labs that I do oh here's what's wrong with you mm. here's what's wrong here's the labs here's the disease here's the problem and it was like really hitting me really emotionally really hard and I just like started crying that I was like can I do this can I be in a in a career that shows people this is what's wrong this is you need to fix you need to change and and I was just so overwhelmed with these feelings of how do I allow someone to feel loved and accepted but still help them and I I went to the shaman and I asked him if I could talk with him and he sat down on the ground with me and I was like I just I don't know how to make people feel more loved and more accepted <laughs> and more and more yeah. you know I want to I want to do yeah. more I want to help them more and he said you know maybe if you spent some time really really doing that for yourself it would just pour through you <laughs> and I was like oh shit like here I am like how do I help other people and love them uh, more and change them more and make them more loved and really the answer was when you do the work for yourself mm. like you just it, it overflows in you and you don't have to actually 
shove that in. It's not a doing, right? Yeah. Like you don't have to love someone by doing. It's just it becomes who you are. And that was such a I spent the rest of that experience like, oh, how do I turn it back on myself and just show up and, and be it and love myself fully and then people will feel that right like people will feel accepted by that I don't have to do it or be it or I don't have to do anything other than actually just focus on loving myself wow it's, <laughs> yeah. it's comforting to me that that is a, a theme and a lesson that you're going through as well yeah um, yeah totally for, for you being obviously a dear friend but also a guru for me <laughs> in a lot of spaces but that's literally what happened uh, last year where uh, a couple months before uh, this experience I went on I finally got to the point where I just started being gentle with who I've been my whole life and how much stress I've been under. And this is, you know, not a sympathy play, but I was like, holy smokes, Tyler, I had so much shame around the fact that I wasn't disciplined as everybody in this industry and I couldn't do this and this, but no one could outwork me. But as far as when it came to nutrition and my self-sabotaging behaviors, it was like so much shame around yeah. that. And it took me actually to like look at how like, you know, inner child work and stuff like that I've mentioned before. But um, then we got to this experience where, the, you know, I, I went to a fit, fit for service event, Sedona, awesome oh, yeah, experience yeah. with Aubrey and them. And, oh, cool. and I got back from that. There was a bunch of practices there where like, for example, um, Aubrey had us do a practice where it, we did a, we did a eulogy practice, right? So you would say, mm-hmm. Hey, pick, pick someone really dear to you. You're going to write from them, right? Like mm-hmm. if they're at your funeral, what they would write about you. That was the first part. The second part was, you know, right from God, what, you know, God would say to you after you passed. And then the third was like your manifesto where you're going to live out. And I'm sitting with uh, two of my uh, housemates at the time getting ready to write this and I just lose it. I'm just bawling, <laughs> snotting. I couldn't get any of this practice done. And I was getting anxious because on stage they're telling us like, yo, you got less than 10 minutes to get all three of those done. And Aubrey gives this example and it was beautiful. He's a great writer and he had Kyle read it, you know, that one to him. And it was, it was just poetic and he, he, and it was so great. But I'm sitting there 10 minutes just having my moment of just, you know, <laughs> tears. I call them holy water, like just letting them rip. <laughs> And I could not get it together. (laughs) And I couldn't get it together. And I was getting anxious because I have two people that I'm about to read theirs to. We're doing a practice where we all share, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to have anything written down. (laughs) But what was coming up for me was, holy smokes, like these words that people are writing about me, like I actually received now. Mm. And I wouldn't have a few months earlier. And I was like this self-love theme there. And it was like, whew, like... Literally, I finally like people come, you know, compliment Tyler, you know, doing great things. You build this, blah, 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 all the time. But I would yeah. never receive that. I didn't believe that mm-hmm. in my core. I had so much shame and I didn't love myself and mm-hmm. those types of things. And I went to go do that experience and holy smokes, it was just radically wow. like healing. I was like, wow, I actually believe those things now, wow. which is crazy too. And since then, like nutrition, everything has gotten like so much simpler, right? Yeah. So on the same theme, kind of getting back to where you're at, like I get yeah. back. I have all this realization. I'm like, this will fix everything. Yeah. And I'm like trying to chase everybody. So I'm like hitting up all my friends in that space. And I'm like, tell our clients, I... they all have to write eulogies. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I want everybody to experience this. I'm like, Hey, how yeah. do I get, how do I get people to experience this? I'm yeah. like, where do I learn more? I start asking them all the resources they're looking for. And they go, Tyler, you're on, you explore, you're on your journey. Like just be it. And I'm yeah. like, that's not the answer I want to hear. <laughs> right. Like, you know, that's what exactly. we do. We that's curate experiences, yeah. your program, your, right, you know, right, your, right. your, all your clients. I'm like, I want to fix this. And like, just be. Right? Yep. And I'm like, that is not the answer, but it's what yeah. I need to hear, right? Absolutely. I, I'm 100% <laughs> in the same place. And because it's like for you, if somebody would have been like, Tyler, you need to love yourself. You need to love yourself. Like five years ago, you're just like, I'm just not quite ready for that. And yeah. it's like we all have to just trust where we're at and just keep being what you believe in. Yeah, yeah. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. It's like, yep, uh, we have these great experiences and now just be. So how does that show up for you now? Like, were you able to take that? Because sometimes it's easy to be in like an emotional experience and you're like, this is my life forever now. Like, I'm never looking back. You know, were you able to like integrate that into your life or how? Yeah, has it's shown changed? up, you know, especially uh, you, I'm sure you can resonate with this being a high achiever as well. Is like my workspace between my compensation for my limiting beliefs was, but no one will outwork me. Right. Mm. So I would sit at this desk in this room all day, every day, might not necessarily be productive, but I would sit there because it'd make me feel like I'm working hard, help me with dopamine, whatever it might be, escapism from, you know, being still, whatever it might be. Right. So now I have, I'm really working on this good balance of 
Tyler and his workspace previously, Mm -hmm. being in alignment and intention, like I don't say working less, but being way more intentional with my time there and creating so much time to get still. Mm -hmm. And that was a hard thing for me um, previously. Like I, to sit there and not do anything, Mm -hmm. like excruciating. Totally. But it was escapism Mm -hmm. me, you know, obviously trying to distract myself from actually like what, what do you gotta, what do you gotta explore Mm -hmm. here too? Yeah. And I think it can get scary because sometimes we think like, well, will doing this work and me being comfortable without being productive, like, will that slow me down? Will I get Mm -hmm. unmotivated or lazy? Um, How has that showed up for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm still exploring it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything to add as far as your experience of those? Because you're building, yeah. you're doing, you're changing lives. Like you're always working on incredible stuff. You so how do you cool? find that balance? What I think is cool is like I definitely work a lot less than what I used to. Mm-hmm. But I think that my time is used a lot better. Mm-hmm. I think I'm tapped into like more creativity, more passion, and taking like when you take care of yourself like anything is possible Mm -hmm. but if you're willing to like work yourself into the ground Mm -hmm. I think before I was busier but I think I was like keeping myself anxiously busy and I think it's even hard for people who are like even um like for anybody even stay-at-home moms when they start unpacking and I'm not saying this for everyone but like one of my clients and she started unpacking I, I just don't have enough time and I have to self-sacrifice and I can't do it. Mm. Just even wanting to fill up her time with giving, giving, giving. So she didn't have to have that time slowing down and really getting honest with herself about where are the places that I don't love myself or that I don't feel happy or anything that's coming up. And so we might even fill it up, whether it's like business goals or whether it's um, anything, even just giving to other people it can show up in so many ways when it's easier to do that. But I have found now that there's a lot more spaciousness in my life. I'm not – before I always felt like I was running out of time, and then I don't feel that anymore. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the time that I am working is just so much more, like, present and creative and mm-hmm. less anxious. Yeah. The first thing that was coming up for me, I was like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. going to take this space and get still because you can't pour from an empty cup. But even that preference around – I'm doing this for other people was something I had to get rid of immediately. Right. I'm actually still unpacking it, right? That's a, Where that's I'm a sitting great there point. and I'm like, oh, like mm. I'm not showing up. A, I'm not. I'm sitting there. If I'm sitting there all day, I'm not in flow. I'm not doing the things that yep. make me show up. I'm not intentional. I'm not actually being productive. I'm just being busy, right? But then I was like, the first step was, oh, but I have, to, I can't pour from an empty cup. So for me to be, you know, to serve, I need to do this. No, actually just be because I am worthy and I love myself to do this for myself. It's a gift rather than Mm -hmm. even the tendency of doing it for others, like being worthy to accept that too. That's a great point. I didn't think about that. was tough to even unpack as well and I still am too. Yeah, even if your selfishness is for you, but if you're saying it's for showing up for other people, you're still like bypassing. Yeah, I'm still like. You're important enough to just do it for yourself. Yeah, I'm still in the maze. So how fun is that? (laughs) I I want to know know about how – um, cause we haven't really got to catch up since I heard that you were, since you told me that you were moving. Like, oh yeah. What brought you to Costa Rica? How's that experience been? I'm so yeah. interested. It was really just that, um, I had a bunch, I had only like, actually only one person that I knew who was living in Costa Rica and I was just like feeling ready for a change, wanting, wanting to move mm. out of San Diego. Like I'm ready for something different. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll give Costa Rica a go, give it a try and it's like, I, it's such an incredible experience there. I mean, I don't know all of Costa Rica. I've heard that Costa Rica is very different depending on what area you're in. I was specifically in Nosara, which is this really cool like hub of um, you have exotic jungle and amazing ocean, but then you also have like this hub of like creators and entrepreneurs and people who are working digitally so Mm -hmm. it brings a really interesting mix of people in there but what's cool about Costa Rica is uh, near there is Nicoya where is known as one of the blue zones which is where people are known to live over the age of 100 so uh, yeah I don't know if you've heard of the blue zones before that I think there's five sounds a little bit familiar yeah Yeah, so I'm pretty sure there's five there's like one in Japan one in Italy Uh, one is actually in California Loma Linda um, Costa Rica. So there's like these different blue zones and that's where they've done a ton of research where people are known to live over the age of a hundred. And so they find these common themes between these places of what is it that makes people not just live over the age of a hundred, but they're like thriving mm. over the age of a hundred. What are they? <clears throat> well, s- some of them is that 
They eat a lot of fresh food, tends to be like pescatarian type. Not a lot of meat, but more fish and fresh food. Um, They get a lot of natural movement. So they're walking a lot. They're doing farming. They're picking up heavy things, kind of like we're trying to simulate here with exercise. Mm -hmm. Uh, They get a ton of it every single day. They're moving their bodies. Not they do not have sedentary lifestyles. Um, Another one is that they really value like mealtime and social aspects together. So just having community and friends and Mm -hmm. friendships. And those are some of the biggest things. And what's really cool about Costa Rica is Costa Rica has like the uh, what would you call it? Like like the way their way of living is Pura Vida. And which means which translates to like pure life or like Mm -hmm. free life. And for me, before Costa Rica, I thought Pura Vida is like just something you put on a t-shirt. It's like a Costa Rica. I went to Costa Rica and Mm -hmm. this shirt says Pura Vida. But when I got there, I realized people live and breathe Pura Vida. Like they stand by it, which means like stress-free living. And they want the world to know that if we lived by this, we'd be happier. We would be healthier. And everyone says it to you to remind you. I mean, you hear all day long. Like anyone from like the construction worker who's like – you know, you're walking down the street to like this lady who doesn't speak English at the fruit stand and she just wants to say, hey, Pura Vida. Mm. And, you know, it's people live and breathe it. And it's like, what would that be like if we took that here, a mantra that we so deeply believe in to remind each other, hey, like stress free living and this is a good life, you know, what yeah. that could do to our nervous systems, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you talk a lot about that um, in your work these days. We talked about that a little on the podcast last time. What's that? Um, as far as nervous system and stress and those types mm-hmm. of things. And I was like, man, you know, we, we chatted about it on the last um, last pod and we talked about breath work. Are there any other practices that are coming up for you right now that are um, that you're able to use with your clients to start down regulating the ner- nervous system in healthy, more productive ways? Um, so I like to do like deeper digging with them. And so one of the things that I, one of the tools that I actually use is I use heart math. Have you heard of heart math before? So heart math is a tool. The one that I use is called inner balance. And it's, it's just a thing that measures your heart rate variability. You like clip it under your ear and then it comes up on your phone and you can see if your body's in coherence or not. Mm. And so you can practice meditating and using your breath to get your body into coherence. And so that's kind of like the breath. That's one tool that they can get immediate feedback right away. And the app will tell you, is your body in coherence or out of coherence? And so that means that's like when your your breath and your mind and your heart rate is all in sync. And that's like when your nervous system feels calm. So when you feel like joy, gratitude, appreciation, love, you will be it puts your body in a state of coherence and it like brings your nervous system down. When you go out of coherence is when your heart rate gets irregular and your body is in more of a fight or flight state. And we go into those states when we have fear, um, worry, stress, like different thoughts or feelings will actually put us out of coherence. So I like to use heart math as like a tool. Anyone can buy it but I use it with my clients where they can get real-time feedback. You can do it while you're meditating. You can do it while you're eating to see, is my body, is my nervous system calm? If your nervous system is not in coherence, you're more likely to crave sugar or overeat or not digest your food very well um, or maybe be anxious. So that's kind of like what we're talking about. It's It's like the immediate fix, but then there's deeper things that you can explore of like, well, what might be subconsciously driving the fear or driving Mm. the worry like if you want to get healthier and you don't know why you're not doing it but deep in your subconscious there's a story that says I'm not worthy of it you're gonna have this like chronic stress because there's like this inner pull right so I actually like to ask one of my favorite tools to ask my clients is what do you fear around having what you really want and when Mm. they can when you can like let yourself really give yourself permission Mm -hmm. most people will say off the top of their head no i really want to be healthier there's nothing there's nothing that's getting in my way but when they give themselves permission to actually explore that question most of the time they'll have a huge list of all the fears that they have so it might actually be like i'm afraid that once i lose weight everyone will congratulate me and then i'll have this expectation that i have to hold this weight well or that I might, people will expect me to start dating and I'm not ready to. 
or I'll have to be intimate or I'll be or expected to be intimate or mm. I'll lose my friends who we bonded over being unhealthy or are we bonded over struggling or like all this whole list of all the things that they fear around actually having what they really want. And so you can see that if like your conscious mind is like, I really, really want it, but in your subconscious, you have all these fears around having it, that's where that nervous system activation is. So I think when you can explore that. That is that is mm. super powerful. And I'm so curious because for someone like yourself, like doing the work and building those practices, those answers, I don't even think would come that easy up to the surface. Obviously, you've been doesn't. doing this work for a long time. How much time does it take and guidance does it take mm -hmm. for a client to land on some of those because the ones you just listed off are radically powerful. And I'm like, man, how long did you have to explore? And I know there's not a yeah. definite line, but like how much space do you give your clients to really come up with their answer or I they keep exploring? That, you know, what I like to do is we always start off with a meditation in the beginning of our sessions. And what I tell them is that when you can come into a place of connection with your body and you can start, they start to feel the difference between when does an answer come from my mind and when does it unfiltered come out of my body? When you feel that unfiltered, Filtered. There's no judgment because judgment is what keeps things pushed into our subconscious mind. It's for our, it protects us from knowing the truth that might hurt us. Mm. So, judgment is what keeps information stored away that you feel like you're being controlled by something. Um, it's like, uh, like Carl Jung says until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and it, you'll call it fate. So, if until you make whatever's in your subconscious, put into your conscious mind maybe this is getting too far out but oh, <laughs> like it, it like it it, it um it controls your behaviors but when you create enough safety and say i receive everything i'm open to hearing anything mm. without judgment without it being filtered so sometimes when clients are ready to actually do that which doesn't take that long if they will trust themselves what would it look like to create a space where don't judge what comes out of your mouth. Don't try and control it, judge it, figure it out. But if you could like go into a, a quick five minute meditation, get connected to your body, and then you answer a question without thinking of it, it just comes out of your mouth and out of your body. That's what's kind of coming out of your subconscious mind. So I think it's just setting the container for them. Feel the difference between what is a mental, I have to figure out what's right and wrong, and what is something that just unfiltered comes out of me, and then they're like, Wow, that's weird. Whoa, Whoa yeah. I didn't see that. I didn't know it. <clears throat> that's it's pretty cool. That's powerful. Yeah. What about like the release? Because we control, we want to control our outcomes. I mean, that's the resistance, right? Yeah. Like, is it is it a practice? Is it a journey to finally get them to feel safe to do that? Or are there practices that you can get them that you have had them do that? I'm so curious. And I know I'm looking for just tangibles and you can't yeah. really put tangibles on this work. Mm -hmm. It's exploration when you're ready, but yeah. especially in the space of what you do working with like, uh, clients one-on-one, -on -one, like mm -hmm. how do we, how do you get them up front to work through the controlled outcome to actually get them to express that? I mean, typically they follow my lead. Yeah. So I have found that when I first started you know, coaching and being a dietitian, I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, ask the wrong thing or cross any boundaries or mm. ask them something that's too personal. Right. And now if I set a container where I'm like, this is a safe space, there's no judgment. Um, I want to encourage you to just have more awareness, let things out and like just explore. And you mm -hmm. might be surprised at some things, but this is like your space for exploration and I think that that really helps. I notice that other people tend to follow, I think, my lead, that mm -hmm. the more I create an open space for them to explore, and I set that. Safe. But most people aren't used to that, right? Like, we're expected that, oh, like, there is a certain period of coaching that I have to constantly remind them, this isn't for you to show up and share how perfect you've been with your eating, because then you actually miss so much learning about yourself. And so I think the classic way is, like, oh, I've always been told by other nutritionists that here's my goals, and if I don't hit them, I'm going to feel disappointed, and I have to report to you like you're my teacher of the bad things that I've done. And then so that shame keeps them stuck, where if I tell them, it's cool, it's good if you hit your goals, awesome, I'm, I'll celebrate with you. 
But if not, and there was resistance and struggle and challenge, that's what I'm interested in. Let's mm-hmm. explore that. And now it's like, oh, okay, like there's no shame here. This is safe. I can explore anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that creates the safety for people to do it on their own as well. We can start creating the safety for ourselves. Do I hold a space of shame for myself or do I get curious with what is that resistance? Why do I do what I do? Could I let my subconscious start speaking to me? Wow. You know? Thank you for the work that you do. Oh, thank you. It's so powerful. Yeah, I love that we can both jam on this. It's, it's so great. Good. I love that it's not, it's, fun. it's like what makes me so excited to jam with you always is it's yeah. not just another meal plan fitness program. It's like we are we are limitless beings. There's yeah. so much to us to explore yeah. and that's like the fun part, not the mm-hmm. uncertainty fear part, right? Yeah, you you totally said it. That like we are... We are infinite, and it's fun when we can start looking for that, too, because I think it's so easy to look for all the things that are wrong for with us, too, at the same time. But, like, where can we start looking for new proof that we can evolve and we can change and grow? And then it becomes fun, mm-hmm. right? Versus, yeah. like, that that yeah. white knuckle, like, follow the plan, do the plan. Yeah. You suck if you can't do the plan. Like, we've both yeah. been there before. I mean, we, were, we were chatting, too. Like, um, <clears throat> it's fun. But then I think you build reps, you know the you know the gold on the other side because yeah. it's not always gentle. It right? is so not. keep re exploring. But you just start building some bravery reps in there. Yep. To keep going back in. Is that mm-hmm. something you feel? Yeah, for sure. For me this this year has been courage over comfort. Mm. Because I think for a while when I first started doing more of the inner work and exploring myself, like it was so uncomfortable. I mean, <laughs> I like popped the lid on all sorts of yeah. emotions that I didn't even know existed yeah. and things and patterns. And to me, it was like, oh, my gosh, there's so much suffering. And now I realize that it's like it, it's not just like anything like the cold plunge. Right. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a test of um not letting your mind control you to think that like you're going to die through this mm-hmm. or you're suffering so bad, but to quiet your mind and be like, this is just sensation. Cold is a different sensation from hot. Mm-hmm. And this emotion of fear or sadness is just a different sensation in my body from happiness and excitement. And it just continues to give me more and more courage. So that's that's how so I, I love what you're doing here with like challenging workouts and cold plunges and things like that because – we get to build self trust. Mm-hmm. We get to learn that, like, oh, quiet mind, it's okay. For me, like, the cold plunge was a huge part of like healing my relationship to food, because mm-hmm. I got to like train my mind that they're just different sensations. So when I'm in my head telling myself a story around, I have to have this food, I need to have it, and then I can stop and be like, what is the sensation that I'm uncomfortable with? Is it boredom? Mm. Is it like, what is the, it's just a different sensation. And a craving for food is a sensation. Not being with a food is just a sensation. I'm not going to die if I don't have that food. And I can start to laugh at it. And the cold plunge taught me that a lot to train my mind that it's like, cold is a sensation and i'm saying this now talking really tough as we're talking about maybe doing a a cold plunge after this podcast (laughs) don't judge me if it doesn't go well (laughs) i didn't prime you at all for this i'm like you bring your your gear for the cold plunge next but i know you do that often mm -hmm. um do you uh when did you start when did you start exploring cold so i've only done maybe like four okay not a lot i used to um go to this place in san diego That I maybe, I think I went there like three times and then I did one in Costa Rica. So it's probably not as cold as yours either. How how cold is yours? We'll we'll talk about that later. It might be (laughs) 30, 34, but we'll talk about that. (laughs) But I was like really curious because that realization was interesting for me. I'm excited to actually go dip again now. Yeah. Like feel the sensations. Mm Mm-hmm. The food is a sensation. Is that something, is that a, is that a nugget you got the first couple of times you started Experience the cold? I think I think the first cold plunge because wow. I jumped in there. So the cold plunge that I did is it's actually a small pool. So you're actually in a cold plunge with like okay. eight other people. Y'all go in together. And when I by the time I had gotten in, there were some people who had been in there for a long time and they're sitting there and they're like meditating. And I'm like, 
I'm just feeling like intense anger. I'm like, why am I here? Why am I doing? I'm like literally feeling so much anger, and I'm like, screw these people yeah. meditating. Who meditates yeah. in this crap? There's like something this, wrong with them. Yeah. There is something wrong. With, this is bullshit. <laughs> They're faking it. Like I'm just so I'm thinking of all these angry things, and I'm just like, I'm so mad. And the instructor comes around and he like presses on my shoulders and he's like, breathe. And he like has me sink into the water. And I'm just like, gosh, dang it. And there was something in that that he said, he said something like, know that this is just your mind. And Mm. this is a practice of controlling your mind and not letting your mind control you. Right now, your mind wants to control you and tell you you're going to die. You're not going to die. Mm -hmm. You'd have to be in here for a really, really, really long time to die. Mm -hmm. So this is like an opportunity for you to feel this is just sensation. It's a different sensation from hot. And something about that really clicked with me as I was breathing in that water. And I literally got into like this meditative practice. I was like, this is just sensation. This is just sensation. And the cold started to just feel like a sensation. I could like remove Mm. the label that I'm suffering and just feel it as sensation. And I think immediately I just started to notice like, when was I uncomfortable with sensation? Mm. Whether it was like boredom or even like being hungry. Sometimes that was something interesting. Of course, I don't think we should be starving all the time. But what was I so uncomfortable with when I would get hungry and I could start removing the labels around every sensation being bad? Because if I'm labeling everything is bad, now I need something to do, make it better, make it go Mm -hmm. away. I have to have a food if I think boredom is a bad sensation or experience or any emotion is a bad emotion. I'm going to always be attached to something to make it feel better hmm. so it's a really and that's, I, a, that's a cool that's a cool realization it, a, it was it was i'm excited super, for this next yeah really really powerful for me yeah super mm-hmm. cool well, yeah right on well we gotta we gotta get you we gotta get you in the plunge before you take off Let's and go back it. costa rica <laughs> yeah um for those mm-hmm. listening as we wrap up here um how do they reach you how do they work with you how do they explore what you do? Well, I just, I love jamming and all this kind of stuff. I'm on Instagram, Gina.Warful. You can find all sorts of free stuff there. And um, I do one-on-one coaching and all the good stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So reach out. What kind of um, thing? You have things coming up too, right? Yeah, well, we do. Um, you yep. were a big part of our Elevate Everything program that we're, we've been working really hard on and it's time yeah. to release. So the Elevate Everything program, um, you got a handful of workshops, I think four. Um, I think so. Classes. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, classes yep. in there that are phenomenal. Anytime any of our true fitters have gotten to work with you in the past, they are ran so and raving. We're so excited and I'm so excited to have you as a trusted partner. So we have a bunch of great information in there coming up soon. Um, but other than that, I mean, more to come. I got to come out to Costa Rica and visit. For ASAP. sure. But thank you so much for your time and coming through today. Yes. Thanks, Tyler.